You hear people saying that um, you know, inequality inevitably rises during the spells of economic growth, and uh, growth is not poverty reducing, it leaves the poor behind. Um, there's always some truth in some cases that happens, but what I've tried to do is just look at the evidence systematically across as many countries as possible. And the evidence is, is, is not so clear. In fact, if you wanted to summarize it in a few key stylized facts, if you like, um, on average, inequality neither increases nor decreases during spells of growth. In other words, half the time during spells of growth we see rising inequality, half the time we see falling inequality. So immediately the idea that inequality necessarily rises in growing economies is, is not correct. Second stylized fact, poverty does tend to fall, typically in growing economies, absolute poverty, the incidence of poverty measured by a fixed poverty line and fixed in real terms, tends to fall during spells of economic growth. Now I say tends because there are exceptions. Uh, of course, uh, people observe things on the ground in places and uh, understandably they come to conclusions, yes, things seem to be getting worse and in some cases they are. But as an empirical generalization, it doesn't hold up. Typically, poverty, absolute poverty, tends to fall with economic growth. I emphasize absolute poverty because that's another important aspect. Whenever, whenever there's a disconnect between what people say from the, from the ground up, what NGOs say, and what the scientists, economists say, looking at data, you've got to look at it carefully, because sometimes it's something to do with how you're measuring things with the data, and not just that people are wrong when they look at things on the ground. And, and that idea of absolute poverty, remember that that's, that's, a, that's a fixed standard, fixed over time. I think when people think about poverty in some economies, they don't use a fixed standard. The standard is changing over time. They've got more a concept of relative poverty. Then things can be more ambiguous. When I said before that uh, absolute poverty tends to fall in, in growing developing countries, it's not so clear for relative poverty. In fact, uh, a lot of the time we see rising relative poverty during spells of economic growth. So you've got to be very careful about what concepts you're using when you answer these questions. If I may permit a third stylized fact to complete the picture, even though economic growth tends to come with lower absolute poverty, it, comes with, it has very different impacts on poverty in different places. It's another thing we've learned. There's enormous heterogeneity. The same rate of growth could bring you anything from a, a modest reduction in poverty to a dramatic reduction in poverty. Why is that? That's an important question. We've got to understand a lot about the economy's concern. But one of the really striking things is how important initial inequality is to how much impact growth has on poverty reduction. So although I said that inequality is, it tends to increase half the time, decrease half the time in growing economies, that sort of suggests, well, it's not such an issue. Well, of course, it matters big time whether you're in the inequality increasing country or the inequality decreasing country. So it really does matter to the countries concerned. But it also means that even if inequality doesn't change, the level of inequality is very important to how much impact you have from economic growth. And finally, we've also started to learn that the level of inequality is important to how much econo economic growth you have. So it matters in two ways. High levels of inequality make it harder to grow the economy, and they make it harder for the growth that occurs to help poor people. Pro-poor growth is, is, is well-defined. Inclusive growth is not so well-defined. So let me start with pro-poor growth. Uh, by pro-poor growth, I mean growth that reduces poverty. If you agree on a poverty measure, then pro-poor growth is something that is growth. Any growth process is, uh, that reduces that poverty measure. Now, that poverty measure, as I've emphasized, it could be absolute. Maybe it's relative. And that maybe is a defense, is an entirely defensible concept of poverty. So. But given that concept, I would argue the only consistent way of defining pro-poor growth is growth that reduces poverty. Now, there is a debate about this. Some people say growth is only pro-poor if the distribution of the growth benefits the poor, if you like. If the growth rate for the poor is higher than the, growth, the average growth rate. Uh, people, that's one interpretation. I would argue the, the concern with that is that how is it consistent necessarily with the poverty measure you're using? So I'd, uh, I'd point to, I'd say, get, get your thinking clear on how you should measure poverty. 
once you've settled on that, absolute, relative, so-called weekly relative measures, get your, make it sensible, that means make it un understood and accepted in the country you're talking about. Once you agree on that, then I think the definition of pro poor should, should follow from that. I interpret inclusive as meaning that um, over a wider range of poverty lines. Right? You may say, well, for one thing, the poverty line uh, um, could be contention over whether the poverty line is, is $1.25, $1.50, $2 a day, of course. Across the, across the world, poverty lines vary from roughly a dollar a day to over $40 a day in, in very rich countries. The highest is, is Luxembourg. So you may say, well, I don't necessarily agree that a dollar a day, fine, I, I'm not going to quarrel with that, as long as you're very clear about the concepts you're using. So let's consider a wider range of poverty lines. I'd argue then pro poor growth is, is a, the same concept of pro poor growth is applied at a wider range of lines. And I'd say that's a reasonable definition of inclusive growth. But this is not settled at all because people use that term in different ways. They may be not, not just talking about income poverty, they may be talking about other dimensions of welfare, they may be talking about people's ability to participate politically in the society. These are important things. Uh, and, and the concept of inclusive growth may have to embrace more than just income poverty reduction. Oh, I think we're making amazing progress since, well, since the 1980s, but uh, back even to before that. But um, I think what we've seen since the year 2000, which I didn't talk about today, is a remarkable acceleration in poverty reduction across the developing world. Again, we're talking about absolute extreme poverty. You know, people living under $1.25 a day. In other words, people living who are poor by the standards of the poorest countries. $1.25 a day is not some arbitrary number. It's the average poverty line of the poorest countries in the world. So we're applying a very, very low standard, no question. But we've still got uh, uh, many people, uh, over a billion people living below that poverty line, 1.2 billion right now. Um, but I think if that trajectory continues since 2000, and that trajectory is not just China, I mean, we're seeing across the developing world, including in sub-Saharan Africa, things are looking much better. I think a lot of policies are in place now, um, a lot of change has happened, uh, um, a greater emphasis on, on, on delivering services to poor people, a huge amount of work to do. But if we can maintain the momentum of this change, I, I'm, I'm quite confident we could um, virtually eliminate extreme absolute poverty by within a few decades, by 2030 or so. Now, virtually eliminate, that last few percent is going to be very difficult. If we're talking about getting, say, lifting one billion people out of poverty, so bringing the poverty rate down to about three percent, that's, I think, very doable with a set of policies that are roughly in place, with strengthening in many areas, with greater emphasis in some countries, but I th I'm quite optimistic if we can maintain that momentum. Oh, I think very important is, is bringing researchers together who, who are working on poverty across the world. There are very few events that uh, do that. Um, it's quite unusual to have a conference that's so focused on poverty and inequality, and this conference on, on Africa, and, and that's, an, uh, that's really valuable. Um, I've just been in a session where I've been hearing papers on, on, on Mozambique, on Africa, on, on in, in um, on Rwanda, on uh, South Africa, and uh, by people working in those countries, coming from all over the place, and, and it's exciting. I mean, that's a, a meeting of uh, professionals who are devoted themselves, they're uh, putting their best analytic skills to the task of measuring and quantifying poverty and forming anti-poverty policy, and bringing them together is a, is a first order of, uh, contribution to the cause of using good analysis for fighting poverty. Mm -hmm.